and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about one simple thing about practice. The other day I was doing an online private lesson, and we were doing simple things to learning about our drawing skills and learning how to see. And why do we practice every day? Because you become familiar with it. And even after 30 years of painting every day, I still practice. And yeah, I do the pairs. You know, hey, it works for me because what I like about the pairs, round shapes, darks, lights, and I can do anything goofy I want to. So the practice that I do is maybe a full sheet. I mean, I'm not trying to look for this magnificent painting here. It's me loosening up my fingers, my brushes, my paints to see how bad I can paint and how good I can paint. So, and then eventually I go a little bit larger. And this is a nine by 11 full watercolor sheet of paper, Fabriano. And then I'll do many of them after a while, practicing with different backgrounds, different color combinations. What a great place to practice. You're not doing a whole canvas. You're just working on these small pieces. You know, I like to use good paper, by the way, watercolor paper, in case it turns out pretty nice. Okay, and it's still a good piece of artwork on good art paper. Okay, as opposed to some cheaper paper that if I happen to do a good painting on a cheap piece of paper, I wouldn't feel good about selling it. Okay, so that's why I like to use professional papers. And you should too. If not now, when, right? So, and I just get it out of the pad. Where all that ends up is I'll do every fruit and vegetable in the world. I get a seed catalog. You know, you're, it's getting close to that time of the year. You're gonna get your seed catalogs of every fruit and garden vegetable in the world. Fantastic. I actually look at that to get ideas. Zucchinis and, and squash and pumpkins and things like that. And I will practice these over and over and over and over. Silly little things. And this actually ended up becoming a whole series. And this is a, the original. Uh, uh, that's the little one I was doing. Was It's called Farmer's Market. Where does that go? It goes into the much larger full sheets fruits and vegetables. It is so much fun to paint fruits and vegetables this large. And that's why we practice, you can see? Because now when I go to this size, I'm kind of familiar with this whole thing of what I'm going after. So it's a lot quicker and cheaper to practice on smaller pieces, good watercolor paper, good paints. Let me show you how I do mine. Normally, I do six of these in a row, one right after another. But for our sake, we're only going to do three at a time. All right, great. So this is, again, watercolor paper. First thing I like to do, and you know if you've been following me, is I like to start off with a tone. There's a tone here. This is, happens to be marigold. It's the tone. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to wipe it in with a paper towel. Just wipe it in. The reason I'm wiping it in is because it's a lot faster. There we go. Neatness does not count. So there we go. I'll do this one as quickly as possible because I want to get going. I want to paint it. So this could either be a warm tone, like a hot pink or red or orange. This is where I do a lot of that kind of experimentation. What colors do I want to use as a background? But for consistency, for this demo here, we're going to be just using a marigold color. Now you notice how it slides around? What I like to do is, since I use both hands when I'm painting, I don't want to have one hand holding it and one hand painting, I just get this box tape, stick it down. One less thing you have to deal with when you're painting, so that way you can concentrate just on the painting and not worry about the thing shifting all over the place. There's the double back tape. The box tape works the best. All right, see now it's, it's, it's permanent. Here we go. 
I have my giant bucket of water over here, right? A gallon of water, a big brush. This is a one inch wide brush, one inch by an inch and a half long. I have my primary colors. I'm going to start off just with the primary colors, red, yellow, blue. Here we go. And we'll, I'm going to make them really funky. Why not? This is a great time to do it. Um, you know, eventually these are going to go into mats. And off to the art stores they go. <laughs> the galleries. And I like to make each one slightly different. I don't want to bore myself into the painting. So I make each one different. A little bit zoptic here. <laughs> Make sure I have it sitting down on the table so it's not floating in the air. To remember to put a stem in there. And now some white or a lighter color. Here we go, yellow. It's going to be yellow. And I do one right after another. Talk about learning how to loosen up. Whoa. More yellow over here. Ooh. Now the back side. The back side of this is going to be darker. Light is coming across this way. In fact, what I like to do is put an arrow up here to remind me this is where the light's coming from. So that means this side is going to be darker. <laughs> and I'm just going to do one way after another. More water in my brush because. I really water down this acrylic, so it acts almost like a watercolor. Uh, nice, nice and wet and juicy and bleeds all over the place. Yeah. I'm going to also, just with a wet paper towel, wipe some of it away. Get it back down to the original. Again, this is so quickly done, but I like where it's going, especially this one. Now I wanna work on the background. Everyone's gonna be slightly different. We'll do the background. It will be bluish. I'm gonna get some white out. Just some white. Giant bucket of white. Titanium white or gesso. I use a lot of white. Now this white will be a highlight. Pure white. Now, lights coming across here. I'm going to have some blue. Mix up my blue, ultramarine blue. Some negative shape painting. Let some of that yellow background come, come peeking through. See, that's what gives this painting, you know, not color up against, but leave a little space. I think that's what gives it that je ne sais quoi. There we go. Go ahead. Keep on the next one. You know, and within just a few minutes, you will have taught yourself an awful lot about painting. <laughs> And you're going to end up with some paintings that you didn't think you could have ever done in a few minutes. The trick, of course, also is that a big brush, not these little two-haired brushes. I know you have thousands of those brushes. You'll just poke your eye out with those things. Don't, do, don't use those little brushes. No, you get so much... So much more done. Now I'm going to go pure blue. So we have the dark. And by coming in with the pure blue, the darker blue, the darkest blue, it makes the pair really pop. Contrast. Contrast, folks. And leave the brush marks. This is not a computer rendering. Show them that the artist had a great time. creating this piece. Dark, light, dark, light. And we'll do one more over here Very quickly. I'm gonna add some red in here because I can. 
this is where I like to get goofy and experimental, that kind of a thing. I really like how it shimmers over here. I like it so much, I'm gonna come back over here. Now it's not gonna turn mucky on me because I get in, get out, in, out. As long as you stay in one place over and over and over, it's gonna turn into you know what. So the reason you do that a lot, by the way, staying in one place, is because you don't know where else to go. Just get out of there. Look how rich. I don't have any black in here, it's still primaries. Look at all the difference. Oh, I wanna do shadow. So it has to sit down, otherwise it's floating away. And here we go, the shadow. And let's do another one over here. I wanna use my wet fingers. This is faster. <laughs> Softening the edge with just wet fingers. There we go. Ooh, nice. I think you get the idea, everybody, of this kind of sketching. And then from there, you know, I'm going to sw swing around and then start doing the full sheets. I do every one of those fruits and vegetables that you find in those seed catalogs but I do it over and over and over. And I become so familiar with the shapes and forms, so does the brush and so do the colors. And that's why I get the confidence to try different color combinations. It doesn't always have to be the primaries. Some days I'll just do monochromatics. Oh, great stuff, right? One color, but all the different variations of that one color. So you can see it's all about practicing, not always trying to make a great, magnificent painting at the end of every one of your painting projects. Make sure you take time off to play and practice and practice and practice. Hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next Bob Blast. Hi there, I'm Bob Burridge, and we're going to the Bahamas this February. I cannot wait to go there with you. Can you imagine doing a workshop, painting by the beach, by the poolside for five days of painting? I cannot wait, because it's most relaxed. I call it a paintcation. Can you imagine painting every day, but there's the bar, there's the beach, and we're right there, we're relaxed and we're creating wonderful paintings in this incredible Bahama aromas, the florals, and the, the wonderful aromas of the, of the food cooking, and the ocean right there, fresh air, and perfect time of the year to get away, right? And to have a great time. It's my favorite place. I call it a paintcation. What a great name for it, a paintcation. And we're going to be painting loose abstracts. Wow! So I'll see you there, and I cannot wait to paint in the Bahamas with you.